Welcome to the five Welcome to the five news for women. Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. I present important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today is April 4th, 2022. Here is the Feisty News for Women. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez of New York is pushing for impeachment proceedings for Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas if he refuses to resign from the Supreme Court. Representative Hank Johnson of Georgia, who chairs the House Judiciary Subcommittee that oversees the courts, agrees with the call for Thomas's resignation. The controversial debate stems from evidence that Justice Thomas's wife, Jenny Thomas, sent text messages to White House Chief of Staff in support of the overturn of the 2020 election, which President Biden won. The news sent shockwaves through the judicial court as officials recognized that Justice Thomas had been the only person who voted to back Trump's request that the court block the National Archives from turning over certain White House documents being sought by the House January 6th Committee. The House January 6th Committee is the group that has been investigating the insurrection where a mob of more than 2,000 Trump supporters stormed the Capitol in a bold attempt to disrupt the joint session of Congress assembled to count electoral votes that will formalize President-elect Joe Biden's victory. Politicians calling for Justice Thomas's res resignation are very clear that he has violated murky ethical codes by participating in the decision to release the White House documents to the House Committee investigating the insurrection. Did Justice Thomas act unethically by being a part of a case investigating the contributors to the wildly shameful January 6th event? Is being married to a woman who supported the secret plot to illegally overturn the election result enough to have him impeached? Yes and yes. Justice Clarence Thomas is married to a woman who does not support the democratic process that he represents publicly. He had to be elected many times to finally sit on the U.S. Supreme Court. His personal involvement with a woman who covertly supported the overthrow of our government should have led him to recuse himself from any cases involving the investigation into the event. And since he did not, how can we trust that he does not have other secret alliances that he is using his power to support? I'm not here to judge what he believes, but I am here to judge how he does it. A judge is supposed to be fair and being fair means recusing yourself from judicial decisions that you know you have a vested interest in. And being the only person on the Supreme Court to vote to block access to White House documents that could shed more light on who was involved in organizing the shameful insurrection, and then later learning that his wife is implicated as a supporter of the insurrection, Thomas publicly let everyone know that he supports his wife's decision. He could have voted along with others to hide his support for his wife's stance against democracy, but he chose to take a public stand and be the only one to vote for blocking access to the White House information. He could have excused himself, but he did not. With this new information, I agree with Representative Alexandria. He's voted as <laughs> covert and cannot be trusted to make fair decisions for our country. In other news, Caitlin Clark, a former law clerk for senior U.S. District Judge C. Ashley Royal of the Middle District of Georgia, testified before a U.S. House of Representatives panel that she believes that she was fired because of her pregnancy. In a written testimony, Caitlin described how her pregnancy was treated as a burden and an inconvenience and that she felt belittled because of it. Caitlin said that after learning about her pregnancy, a career law clerk complained that she would never get work done now. The clerk then became hypercritical of her work and made excessive and often contradictory edits, leading to her being fired for not being fit for the job. Judge Royal then called Caitlin to his home to reprimand her, telling her while clerking may be a good mommy job, work still has to be done. He then rescinded his prior offer to extend her clerkship by two years. Clayton's complaint was heard by another judge in Royal's court who ruled against her. Her appeal was rejected immediately. Unfortunately, court employees aren't protected in the workplace by the Title VII of the Civil Rights Act. Pending legislation, the Judiciary Accountability Act would extend the same protections to judiciary workers. According to Law 360, the Federal Judiciary's Workplace Conduct Working Group said it has taken extensive steps to address discrimination and harassment, including the initiative to have employee complaints 
be examined by judges from different courts than where the complaint originates because judges working in the same local court system will likely support each other in their rulings. Well, good. Supporting our judiciary system is just as significant as any other protected job. And as we can see, there needs to be clear checks and balances for grievances in the workplace. Title IX of the Education Amendments of 1972 is a federal civil rights law that prohibits discrimination on the basis of sex, including pregnancy and parental status in educational programs and activities. The same protection needs to be afforded to women in the judiciary field. Not allowing a safe space to resolve grievances will lead to rampant abuse by those in authority. When women cannot speak up and be heard, we all lose. In other news, we've all heard about the battle against revenge porn, where oftentimes jilted exes threaten to expose nude photos on the internet out of spite. Women are usually the victims of such disgusting behavior, yet recently, a 17-year-old male teenager in Michigan killed himself six hours after blackmailers threatened to release a na naked picture of him. The blackmailers had set up a fake Twitter profile posing as an attractive girl and began speaking to him before sending a naked photo of the girl to the teenager. DeMay, thinking he was engaging with another teenager, sent a new photo of himself back to the girl. But then the girl demanded $300 or she would release the photos publicly, police said. But even after he paid the $300 to the blackmailers, they reportedly demanded more and asked for $1,000 for the teenagers. According to local sheriffs, of course the teenager couldn't pay and he told them, you win, I'm gonna kill myself. The criminals responded with, go for it. Unfortunately, the teenager committed suicide shortly after the exchange. The internet has created a new wave of criminals and classifications for new crimes. Let's learn about sextortion. To give us an overview of this addendum to revenge porn, we have Carrie Pescarello, CEO and co-founder of Global Secure Resources Incorporated. Carrie is a speaker and author who is a victim advocate that took her overseas experience with the private sector and State Department and turned it into a platform to help others navigate safety online. Carrie, please help women remain safe by offering insight into sextortion. What do we need to do to avoid it? Thank you so much for having me today on The Feisty. I'm so thrilled to be here. But yes, strategizing your safety for women is critical. And one of the things that we see, especially now with so many people on the dating websites, is sextortion and other forms of abuse that happen online and in person. So one of the most important things for us to do is to really strategize our safety with strategies, tools, and techniques. And this is what is in my, my presentation and programs for women. I have a perfect example for you. So there was a, a group of women who were um, online dating and they hooked up with some men that were over in uh, another country and they developed this relationship and it was months Typically, these types of romance scams will be two to three months. What happened was the person, you know, showered this person with lovely messages, how much they love them. And there was even a marriage proposal in the works. And, you know, they were inviting the woman to come to their country, to live in their mansion. It was going to be a beautiful life. And then they asked for a topless picture. These women sent the, the topless picture. The next email that came was, $10,000, or this is going to the place of your uh, business. This is going to your family. This is going to your children. This is going to your church because they had already developed all this intel on the person they were dating, right? And so all of these women went to the local police department and they said, what can we do? The, the, you know, we're being blackmailed. And the police Station said, you have to call the American embassy in the country where these calls were coming from. Of course, the women did. The regional security officer, unfortunately, had to tell them there was nothing he could do. So the point of our strategizing your safety is we have to make sure that anytime we're giving up any type of picture that's inappropriate in our mind, that it can become public. And we have to make sure that we're owning whatever picture we take and we're not going to be blackmailed by anybody because what happens when somebody blackmails you, they'll ask for 10,000. You give it, they'll ask for another 10,000 and it keeps going. There's no stopping it until the picture's released. 
So we want to make sure that we're going to eliminate that issue. We're only going to be taking pictures that we can own and say, yep, that's me. And we'll never be blackmailed. Wow, being bold enough to own up to the photos and not allowing any criminals who have the power to shame you is the best recourse for sex extortion. Thank you so much, Carrie, for this awesome wisdom for women. Oh, it's time for a break. What new fashion trend is scaring the daylights out of women? Which singer was honored with a Grammy for celebrating being a hoe? Stay tuned, the juicy details of these stories and more right after the break. Hi, I'm Angelina, a fashion designer located in Ormond Beach, Florida. I'm also an owner of luxury handmade laundry online boutique. When I moved to United States, I was struggling to find beautiful laces and laundry at affordable price. So I decided to start my own company and bring something, something unique to US market. Angie Showroom is dedicated to providing high quality affordable intimates for people who want to feel comfortable and confident. We make our pieces from Italian and French silk, satin silk and lace. All our collections are limited and only less than 1% of women wear our collections worldwide. You deserve it all. Please visit us at angieshowroom.com. Welcome back. I am T. Erica with the feisty news for women. Girl, guess what? The U.S. Grammy Awards 2022 aired last night, and thankfully, there wasn't a scandal to overshadow the achievements of women in music. A remarkable win came for Jasmine Sullivan, who won the best R&B album for Hotels, an album that explores female sexuality, relationships, love, heartbreak, and other feminine themes. Jasmine, who we all remember from the 2008 hit song, Bust Your Windows Out Your Car. Well, she did not disappoint with this compilation of stories about different women going through the motions of life. If you haven't already, you should check out Hotels on your favorite music streaming platform. In other news, a high fashion trend for men's balaclavas that is trickling its way down the street fashion is being viewed as inappropriate because of the garment's association with attacks on women. The face covering headgear triggers women who have been victims of assault and makes other women feel unsafe when we see them. Even though it's trendy for men to wear them, I ask all men to be mindful that this is a serious turnoff and threat to women's peace of mind. If you're a man who cares about supporting women, please don't wear them and encourage your friends not to wear them too. Do it for us. In other news, we're living the feisty life and we love ourselves because of it. While some of us believe that meeting a good man is just a fantasy, there are women who know that real love exists. In this edition of He's a Good Man, let's meet a woman who shocked herself when she met her partner. A queer woman, she couldn't believe that she found the one. Auntie Vice, tell us your story about the good man you know. Hi, I'm Auntie Vice with Fat Chicks on Top and Love Letters to a Unicorn, and I'm here to celebrate a good man. His name is Sharon Smith. I met Sharon a little over six years ago at a poetry reading, of all things. I had gone to support a friend, and he was there to perform. I knew there was something special about him, but I couldn't put my finger on it. And a straight, cis man was the last thing on my mind to date at the time. But I chased him down for his phone number and we went out on a date two days later and we've been together for the last six and a half years. He's a good man for lots of reasons. He's a dad, he has two kids, a 16 year old daughter and a six year old son that he would do anything for. He's always there trying to support them, show that he's got their back and he loves them. He has been a great role model for my nephew who's nine and whose own dad is tied into too much of the toxic masculinity that we see that boys don't cry, boys aren't artistic, boys don't show emotions. And he's able to see through Sharon that a good man can openly express affection without being overly sexual, that he can embrace the arts, that he can be tender, as well as the same guy he can learn to throw a punch from on our heavy bag and learn to change the oil within his car. So I love him for that. He's been incredibly supportive for me. I was a big learning curve for him. He didn't know too many LGBTQ folks before he met me, and he spent 
a large part of the first couple years of our relationship learning about the queer community and learning how to support us. And he co-hosts uh, a podcast called Gag on This, and it's a bunch of straight folks talking about various subjects, and he's been able to be a voice of advocacy to support LGBT folks. Uh, he has brought me on to talk about queer community and queer politics. He openly supports the trans community and shows his love. He supports his community in lots of ways. He volunteers uh, at a poetry center in town. He mentors youth. He is just an incredible guy. He's the last person I would have ever thought to date. We wouldn't have matched up on a dating site, but I met him and there was just something about them. And there are good men out there. If you want to find out more about him, he hosts uh, his own poetry podcast called the Iambic Poetry Podcast that you can find on all podcast streaming services. He also runs his own um, audio and DJ business under AsiriusProduction.com, and you can find him under Mr. Resolution on BandLab with all of his music. So keep, keep hope. Uh, you, there are good guys out there. They're great role models for our kids. And they sometimes show up the least times you expect they will. Wow. I'm so glad you found a good man in Sharon, Auntie Vice. Thank you, Sharon, for being a man who is so awesome that a woman wants to brag about you. Check out Sharon's Iamic Poetry Podcast on all streaming services to congratulate him. And good news, the Fight to Life Skill Trainings for Women held its monthly private class this Saturday. This month, we invited women to discuss radical forms of self-care live during a private Zoom meeting. We asked three feisty women to share intimate stories of big life changes they had to make to ensure their peace of mind. Sarah Kuhn shared how she had to walk away from a dream life when she realized that it wasn't her dream she was living. Anne Marie Zanzo made a hard decision despite knowing that it would disrupt her family, yet this decision led her to the peace she had been longing for for decades. And yoga instructor Angie Barrett now creates healing for trauma victims after a mental break that changed her life forever. I am so glad to have met these women and to have been inspired by them. Feisty women just like them participate in a panel discussion and question and answer session every month exclusively for subscribers of the Feisty News. You are invited to attend the next Feisty Life Skills Training for Women on the first Saturday in May. Subscribe to thefeistynews.com for your personal invitation. Ah, thank you for watching the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. Remember, be feisty. Women must be seen and heard. Welcome to the feisty. Welcome to the feisty. Welcome to the feisty. News for women. <laughs>